injection section 3.2 there's a discussion on the, the serious solution of the Legenda equation and then we get the form of Legenda polynomials so we'll look at this uh, derivation how you get the serious solution so let's write down the Legenda equation so you have ddx uh, 1 minus x squared times dp dx plus l times l plus 1 p equals to 0. So that's equation 310 of Jackson. Okay, so up to here l is uh, can be any number, any real number, but uh, for the gender point now we will uh, later on, we identify those as integer and zero or positive integer. But uh, uh, we need to get the series solution first to see how we can get to that conclusion. So uh, to do the series expansion first, uh, we can do the derivative of the first term and so get it to another form. So you have uh, d square p dx square and then multiplied by one minus x square. So just take the derivative of the second factor and the first factor will give you a minus two x turn dp dx. Okay. L, plus L times L plus one p equals to zero. Okay, so that uh, just change the form and because uh, we'll, uh, it will be, at least for me, it's easier to work uh, in the series uh, this way. So now we assume the form of the, of the solution. So gen generally we can assume that this P is just sum over j from zero to infinity, some coefficient a sub j and x to the j plus alpha. And alpha is a, a number to be determined uh, in the process. So we can start from the summation from zero to infinity because alpha is still unknown. If we start from another j, just basically it's just shifting alpha, so that doesn't matter. So we just by convention start from zero. Okay, so and what we need to do is uh, substitute this form of solution into this equation and then match term by term, each power of x will uh, get one equation out and all, all the equation must be set to zeros and, and then you get the relationship between all the a's coefficient and also the alpha number. Okay, so uh, we substitute it into this um, piece, uh, just this form, and dp dx uh, is uh, straightforward, so dp dx, it's just, we'll take the derivative of that, you just basically getting uh, the j plus alpha factor in front and then x to the j plus alpha minus one. So that's dp dx. And then dp dx only appear when uh, you take multiply by x. So that's only that is important. So when you multiply by x, you cancel with this minus one factor. So you can write one more line here, x times dp dx. It's a simple sum over j from zero to infinity, a sub j, j plus alpha, x to the j plus alpha. So this factor has the same kind of a form in summation as the p, so that kind of a easy to do. Now uh, you need to do the second derivative of p and then multiply by this one minus x square part, uh, factor. So 
d square p dx square. So kind of uh, doing the same thing. A sub j x plus alpha, and then you have this j plus alpha minus one x times j plus alpha minus two. Okay, so that's the second derivative of p with respect to x. Okay, and you need to multiply by the one minus x square power. So multiply by one, of course, is this one. Multiply by x square is uh, x square d square p d x square. It's easy because you just cancel with this negative two power. So sum over. So x j x j plus alpha j plus alpha minus one and x to the j plus alpha power. Okay, so you have this term, this term, and then x squared times the second derivative, all are in the series that with uh, x to the power of j plus alpha. So you can group these three terms uh, together and they all have the same power of x in the, the same power. Okay, so, but not this, the first term, just the uh, one terms d squared p dx squared. So this is in j plus alpha minus two. So uh, to group the all terms together, so that different way to do it, uh, um, the way that I prefer would be uh, to change this power of x also in the same notation, x to j plus alpha. Okay, so what we need to do is uh, just define this um, power into another another index, say like uh, if we call <clears throat> j plus uh, j plus alpha minus two or just the minus two j if this j um, minus two power equals to just j pi. Okay, if this j minus two is j pi, this becomes j pi plus alpha. So it's similar to this one. So this implied whenever we have uh, j, uh, we'll, we'll change it to j pi plus two. Okay, whenever you have j with j plus j pi plus two, and then for j from zero to infinity is j pi, and from negative two to infinity. Okay, so we can write uh, write like uh, so for j pi from c negative two, the j pi is j minus two, j is zero, j pi is minus two, so to infinity infinity, then j becomes j prime plus two, and then this j prime plus alpha plus two, and then j prime plus alpha plus one, x j prime plus alpha. So this is our change of variable. Okay. So now all four terms are of the same form, although this is pi, but uh, now that you have written it in this way, because j pi is just a dummy variable, you can now erase all the pi and this becomes j also, this is just j. Change all j pi back to j, then you get all four uh, of the same, uh, of the same power of x, of the x to the same power, okay? The only difference is that now this, the first term is summing from j from minus two to infinity and all the other are from zero to inf infinity. So there's two extra term. One is j so is minus two, one is j equal minus one. Okay, so those are extra equations. So let's just look at that. So when well, j prime is minus two, this is just a zero. So first equation is a zero. Okay, and so it's minus two cancel with this. So you get uh, alpha 
okay, and then uh, minus two plus one is minus one, so this is alpha minus one. Actually, this is not plus multiplication. So a zero times alpha. The first is alpha. This the next one is alpha minus one. That equals to zero. So that's the j pi equal to minus two term. So that has to be zero. Okay, and then uh, the next one is j pi minus one. So this becomes uh, a one. And this is minus one, this is alpha plus one. The J pi minus, J pi is minus one, minus one times pi. A minus one, so this becomes this alpha, alpha equals to zero. So you need to satisfy this and satisfy that. Okay. And uh, the rest is just uh, summing over from zero to infinity. All the coefficients add up to be zero. Okay, so you have this one minus this one and minus two of this one plus L plus L times L plus one times this one is zero. Okay, so uh, so for J. So uh, oh, we have this x a j plus two. So this one is j plus alpha plus two times j plus alpha plus one. So that's uh, that's this one going to here, and then minus this one, and then. All these three terms will have us the same x j, so we have grouped all this together. So, we'll, so we'll have a plus a sub j. Okay, and the first one is minus of this one. Okay, or we can change that to a minus sign because the first term is minus sign. So change that to minus sign. So you have AJ is J plus alpha, J plus alpha minus one. So that's this term, okay? And the minus two of these terms, so you're all minus, so you become plus two, J plus alpha. Okay, so that's this one and then plus L times L plus one times this one, so become minus L times L plus one. That equals to zero. Okay, this is four. J is greater or equals to zero. Okay, so now you have this uh, three equation, or this is all for HJ, okay? And now look at the second uh, equation. You see that uh, for a given j, you determine j plus two, because uh, you can solve a sub j plus two by this equation, just this term move to the other side and divided by this factor. Okay, so, so, all, so you're always moving j to, uh, uh, to just increase it by two, always increase j by two. Okay, so then uh, starting from a0, you have a0, a2, and a4, and so on. Starting from a1, you have a1, a3, and a5. So that two series uh, will not mix. So you have two independent series, so you can have uh, either a0 is zero, or a1 is zero, okay? So you can consider separately or once, Thing or the other thing is uh, you can always set a1 to zero. You set a1 to zero, the two solution will be either alpha is zero because a zero is not zero. So alpha, either alpha is zero, alpha equals to one. So this two, two solution for alpha will give you two series. So you always choose a start from a zero 
but if you choose uh, alpha is equals to one, then uh, the full solution alpha is one, you basically just shift it by one. Okay, so that is just equivalent to setting A0 is zero, zero, but keeping A1 is uh, non-zero. Okay, but that situation you, you choose alpha equals to zero. Okay, so this equivalent, so you can always choose, uh, you can always set, uh, set A1 is to zero. You set A1 to zero, you get rid of the second equation. Then uh, you have two solution alpha equals to zero or one. Okay, so you have uh, two solutions. So either alpha is zero or alpha is one. And we'll see the consequence of uh, which one that we should use uh, to determine the, this, uh, the series solution. So, uh, we can simplify this a little bit when we write solve for a j plus two in terms of a j. Okay, we move the, the second term to the other side and divide it by this factor. So you have a a j times whatever inside is. Uh, you can group the j plus one factor out, this becomes j plus alpha minus one plus two becomes j plus alpha plus one. Okay, so let's, let's see if I got it correctly. So this is j plus, take the j plus alpha out, this becomes j plus alpha plus one, and then minus l times l plus one. And then divided by J plus alpha plus two, J plus alpha plus one. Okay, so that's the relationship between the two. I think this is uh, Jackson 3.14. Okay, so now let's uh, look at what the choice of alpha is zero or one. If alpha is zero, this becomes J times J plus one minus L times L plus one. Okay. So now if L is uh, an integer, a positive integer or zero or positive integer, then you see that uh, the coefficient A, J sub H of two will be zero at any, at uh, J equals to L. Say if L is just an integer, when J equals L and alpha is zero, this is J times J plus one. And when j equals l, this will be zero. So a j plus two will be zero. Once it's zero, then the next term a j plus four will be zero. Also, all the higher order j a will be zero. So you truncate the power series to a to an order of l, x sub l, because l, now l is zero. So when j is l, that's the highest order and all the x to the power of j greater than l will be zero, the coefficient will be zero. So that you can truncate that, um, that series if alpha is zero. When alpha is one, this becomes j plus one times j plus two, then, uh, then this uh, series uh, is not truncated. Uh, if you choose an L, then uh, of course J is equal to minus one, minus L minus one, it will be the same situation. But uh, uh, you start from J from zero. So the first one will be, this is alpha is one, so it's one times two, All right? So it depends on what L you are using then uh, when, if it's not zero, once it's not zero, it's greater than this one, then, uh, then you have uh, a j plus two is non-zero and all, all other will be non-zero. So that will have an infinite series. Okay, so, uh, and then, uh, uh, so we'll, Basically, just use this uh, j equals zero. Uh, choose a, choose, uh, we'll choose 
alpha equals zero. So we we'll set A1 to zero and alpha to zero to satisfy the first two equation. And when you do that, set alpha to zero. So A or the A uh, J will be zero for uh, J uh, greater than R, uh, greater than R uh, L. If uh, L is belongs to integer. Okay. So, and now A zero is uh, non zero. A one is zero. So, for this one, alpha is zero. Then uh, you basically pick up all the term A zero and A two and, and A four up to A to the power power L. Okay, because alpha is zero. Okay, so you pick up the, basically an even series. Okay, uh, and you. And it will be truncated if L is uh, is uh, uh, a even integer because you only have even term. Now, if alpha is equals to one, then uh, you have extra one here. A zero is non zero. A one is zero. So you pick up all the odd term. If L is uh, an odd integer, then you truncate the the series of J is equals to L minus one. Okay, that will be because alpha alpha is one here. Okay, so basically um, you can truncate uh, the series and get a polynomial out of uh, the two choices. So alpha is zero for this one, you get an even series, even series, so for and it's truncated uh, with alpha is even, okay? If, uh, let me write here, for alpha equals to one, you get an odd series. So you get polynomial only for L is odd. L is odd integer, odd integer. Then you get a polynomial. Okay, so you get the x sub l, so p will be x to the l. Some coefficient order or order of x to the l. Okay. The power of the highest order is will be x to the l. Okay, and so that is uh, the form of the series and then the, the condition for how you truncate the series. Once you truncate the series, then uh, the form of the solution P will be always be finite because uh, now it's not an infinite sum. But if you cannot truncate it, then uh, this uh, iteration may not co be convergent or the series is not convergent because we look at R, J is large. The numerator is j square. The largest term is j square. The denominator is also j square. So this one is proportional to each coefficient is just uh, proportional to each other. And so you multiply by x if the x magnitude is uh, equals to one or x equals to one or minus one, then the series may not be it's, it's not convergent, it's divergent. So that uh, the, the, if, you're, if the problem includes x uh, equals to one and minus one, then uh, you cannot use that, uh, that solution. Okay, so then in that situation, you need the L to be integer so that you can truncate it. So it depends on L is odd integer or even integer. If for even integer, you truncate uh, at uh, at uh, a even number, you get the even series. So you choose alpha equals is zero. If you, L is an odd integer, you choose alpha is one, then you get an odd series. You also, also truncate at x to the power L. Okay, so that uh, all this truncated series um, 
call a Legenda polynomial. And okay, so uh, uh, that's how you get uh, one, as it is one way to look at why you get uh, the Legenda polynomial solution for this Legenda equation and why we fix L as, as integer because uh, when we include the whole range of theta in the spherical problem, then we include x is one and minus one. In that situation, we must choose uh, L as an uh, integer or, or zero so that we have a well-behaved function. At least one solution is well-behaved, okay? And uh, for the other solution is divergent. So if you include the whole range of theta, you choose just the Legenda polynomial. Okay, so that's uh, the discussion of the general polynomial using series solution. Okay, so we'll stop here.